peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ and people of goodwill, we are privileged once again with the season of Advent, a moment of grace and a period of inner introspection. It is a favorable time for a personal renewal and conversion. Our Advent season this year comes at the backdrop of disillusionment on many fronts, such as lack of decorum, deception, lies, unfulfilled promises, wanton trespassing, Selective application of the rule of law, cyberbullying, surging criminal activities, unabated power outages, etc., etc. This season, as it were, is an invitation to examine these experiences in the light of our calling. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. During his memorable sermon on the mount, our Lord Jesus Christ declared to his disciples that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And in that moment, Jesus moved away from the attitudes to responsibility. He shifted from character to influence. Jesus wanted to bring to the fore the fact that character comes before influence. The greatest influence we have comes from the person that we are, namely our character. Our character determines the influence we have on others, e.g. a parent on children, a teacher on students, or a leader on followers. Hence, the person we are who have a far greater influence on others than anything else we do. In this season of Advent, we are called to make a difference. Each one of us, according to his or her calling, giftedness as well as mission, we are invited to manifest in person and give witness to our Christian calling to be sought of the earth and the light of the world. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the primary usage of salt in ancient times, among other things, was to avert decaying of food stuff. So, when Jesus says you are the salt of the earth, he's not only challenging us, but also talking about the world around us. We, we and the world are desperately in need of salt to avert moral degeneration. As Christians, it is our responsibility to flavor society with our quality of life and witness, which is coherent and faithful to God, to preserve the world from ruin by our moral consistency, our intercessions, our penance, and our self-sacrifice, to heal society's vulnerability by way of prayer, acts of charity, counsel, and attention, especially to those in need of understanding 
and mercy. And to unite people, fostering peace and unity among persons, communities, and peoples of different persuasions. Therefore, the whole purpose of salt is to bring flavor, to preserve, to heal, and to unite. This is also our calling and our mission to avert moral degeneration. Anything else, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, will be compromising our vocation. Further, Jesus uses a second analogy of light. Jesus is the true light of the world. Confer John chapter 8, verse 12. But as his followers, we must reflect his light. We cannot help the world if we are not different from the world. Therefore, there should be something different about our manner, something different about our countenance, and something different about our life. It is this otherness of our life that illuminates the darkness of sin, challenges deception in our midst, enlightens ignorance among our people, and dispels acts of abomination. Jesus says, when you let your light shine, people will see your good deeds, and they will praise your Father in heaven. Hence, your good works will enkindle in others the experience of a God and will result in giving praise to God and glory to Him. As we wait for the nativity of our Lord, may our lives be sought to avert moral degeneration and the light to illuminate the world from the darkness of evil. May Mary, the mother of the child Jesus, intercede for each and every of us. Given this at the cathedral of the child Jesus, this 21st November, solemnity of the Christ the King, in the year of our Lord, 2021, 14th of our Episcopate. Yours, Archbishop Alec Banda.